Hallelujah. It's such a blessing to be together. Amen. Amen. Anybody trusting in the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Won't you just shout it with us? Lord, I trust in you. Hallelujah. I believe you. Oh, God, for everything that you've promised. Hallelujah. Now, won't you go ahead and praise him? Won't you go ahead and celebrate how good he is and how trustworthy he truly is? Amen. Hallelujah. Nobody like the God that we serve. Put those hands together. Yeah. Come on, sing with the joke. Jehovah, you say, I trust. Say, I trust in you. In you. Uh huh. Sing. Oh, Lord, Jehovah, you. I trust. I trust. Say, say, I believe, I believe you. I trust, say, I trust in you. In you. Say, oh Lord, oh Lord, Jehovah, you. I trust, I trust uh -huh. in you. Say, I believe, I believe, what do you believe, I Joe? believe you are the God of miracles. Uh -huh. You are the God. You I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I want you to celebrate right there. Hallelujah. Yeah. Say Jehovah. Jehovah, you. Say I trust you. I trust yeah. in you. Oh Lord. Oh Lord, Jehovah, you. Now I trust in you. I trust. Somebody shout, I believe. Say, I believe, I believe you. I trust, say, I trust. Uh huh. Say, in you. Shout, oh Lord, oh Lord, Jehovah, you. I trust in you. I trust mm -hmm. in you. Somebody shout, I believe. I believe, you I are believe the God. you are the God of miracles. Anybody believe that? You are the God of Wonders, you are the God all powerful. I believe. Yes, I do. I believe. 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 I Because we believe in his promises, we can say bye-bye to the pain and the sorrow of the past. Amen. It has no hold on us. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Come on, lift your voice and sing. So long, bye-bye. So long, bye-bye. Stay with me.
Goodbye to my worry. Bye bye. Goodbye to the pain, y'all. Bye bye. Goodbye fear. Bye bye. You're not welcome here. Bye bye. Goodbye fear. Bye bye. You're not welcome here. Bye bye. Goodbye to the stress now. Bye bye. Goodbye to the mess now. Bye bye. Goodbye to the worry now. Bye bye. Goodbye to the stress now. Bye bye. Goodbye fear. Bye bye. You're not welcome here. Bye bye. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Bye bye. So I guess we're all ready to worship and praise the Lord our Savior Jesus Christ this morning. Amen. Come on now. Come on now. That don't sound like somebody that's not ready to praise him this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. You just said goodbye to every situation, every circumstances that has come hinder you this morning as you're coming to this place to worship so amen so let's give him some praise this morning amen for he is worthy to be praised amen hallelujah hallelujah so long bye-bye hallelujah what a what a what a word what a word father god we come before you this morning father god in the precious and mighty name of that of our lord and our savior jesus christ father god father god we just want to say thank you this morning Thank you, Father God, for this day. Thank you for this opportunity, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for your presence. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your Holy Spirit today, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for moving every hindrance, every burden, every distraction out of our way today, Father God, that we can worship and praise that of your holy and mighty name, Father God. For you're an awesome God. You're a mighty God, Father God. And I come before you, Father God, with that of my fellow believers, Father God. Father God, I just want to say thank you for all that you do for us, all that you allow us and able to do, Father God. Father God, for this, and without you, Father God, that we can do nothing, Father God. So we just bless your name today. We praise your name. We glorify your name. We magnify your name, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And Father God, we thank you for the man of God that is going to bring forth your word this morning, Father God, to, to more so, Father God, continue to uplift us, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. So we ask that you bless him, Father God. Bless your word that is already blessed this morning, Father God. Bless Judah. Bless the choir. Bless everyone that comes up to this podium, Father God, to say anything regarding to you, Father God, to lift up your peoples, Father God. So we thank you this morning, Father God, for this day, Father God, that you have allowed us, Father God, to be up in our right frame of mind, our good health, our good strength, Father God. There's many, Father God, that are struggling, Father God, with this terrible disease, Father God, of dimension, Father God, who are not able to do these things, Father God. So we thank you, Father God, for your presence. We thank you for this opportunity, Father God, to, Father God, to be in your house of work but praise today. So we just lift up your name, Father God. We just bless your name. We praise your name. We glorify your name. And we ask, Father God, in all these things that you just have your way today, Father God, in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 With all that's going on around us, it's important for us to remember where victory belongs. Victory belongs to our Savior regardless of what it looks like, regardless of how many shootings are going on, how many things might be happening in your home, things that are happening in your mind, victory belongs to Jesus. Anybody glad about that? That means you're guaranteed victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we just celebrate that together this morning. Can 
can stand against the Lord. No one can. No one we. Who can stand against our King? No one can. No one we.
remind yourself today.
right, it's time for our responsive reading. And as usual, our responsive reading will come from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. You have it in your bulletins, and they will also put it up there on the screen. I will read the leader, and you read the congregation, please, please. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. <laughs> Altogether, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Thank you. Pastor Jones, Pastor Thomas, ministers, Antioch family and friends, and those watching us online, good morning. good morning. 
Thank you for joining us today. We're happy and honored you chose to worship with us today. The kindness of others is a genuine reflection of the kindness of God. The Lord bless you because you have shown kindness. 2 Samuel 2 and 5. Antioch Church family, thank you. Your words have comforted us, your support has strengthened us, and your love has sustained us, the noble family. Come join us, come join one of our small group Sunday school classes at 9 a.m. Adult classes are held in the sanctuary via Zoom. Head over to our website for the link. Children's Sunday school classes will be held in classrooms only. Join us, not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday. There's no Bible study this Wednesday. Write it down, take a picture, do what you gotta do to remember that. Don't be sitting on Zoom waiting for somebody to come in there because they're not coming. Okay. Oh, but next week, come back and join us for Wednesday Bible study. Uh, Wednesday for youth and adult Bible study. Bible study will be held in the sanctuary and on Zoom, and you can head to our website for the link. But again, next week. Enjoy your fort. As always, we ask that you keep our sick, shut-in, and bereaved families in your thoughts and prayers. And has anyone celebrated a birthday since last Sunday? Yeah, yeah. Happy birthday! Yeah. How about any anniversaries? God in the works with that. God in the works. Okay. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel at AMBC Oviedo. And do we have any visitors with us today? If so, please stand so our ushers can give you a visitor's card. Thank you, thank you, thank you for visiting us with us today. It wasn't by luck or by chance, but by divine purpose that you made it to Antioch. Y'all did that. I did. <laughs> Woo! I ain't even have to write it down this time. Woo! Okay. I'm getting done. I'm getting done. God working on me. I'm getting done. Okay. <laughs> And have a happy 4th of July to celebrate with your family and friends. Again, no Bible study on this Wednesday. And Pastor Wolf, if you want to go ahead. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Amen. I'm not coming up here to rap today. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the claps going. No, I wasn't happy. <laughs> Amen. But I just wanted to, um, as while we're doing the announcements, to just uh, bring your attention to a couple of important announcements uh, regarding the youth ministry. We've been, uh, as you know, meeting on Sunday mornings in a separate worship setting. And we've been praying, we've been researching, we survey, and we meet with pastor, and we evaluate how things are going, what we could do different. And um, so I'm going to start with the K through 5 group just to keep us on task. So we have some good problems. Can you say good problems? So good problems are with our young people uh, and that group, they're expanding sometimes where we experienced on Sunday that we didn't have the capacity to fit them in the classroom uh, because we had the fellowship hall being used by the middle and high school group. So uh, we didn't want to have to turn any uh, young people away from attending that worship service because we didn't have the room. So uh, what we see that will work out for them, we're going to not have the middle and high school at a separate worship service on Sunday mornings to allow the children's church to move back into the fellowship hall where they'll have room for every uh, young person in that age group to be able to attend that worship service and you'll be able to be here in the sanctuary and the middle and high school group will meet here as well and we want them as they were before COVID serving in the sanctuary and the choir and the ushers. We're in the media, 
We want you young people serving, amen. You're the, you are the church now, and you'll continue to set the standard and precedence for the church to come, amen. So with that in mind, as Sister Candace said, not this Wednesday, we won't be here this Wednesday, but for all our middle and high school, uh, Wednesday's a big uh, time for you to come together. That's when we fellowship. We can have a more uh, open environment of interactions and activities and still above all give you the word of God. So we're encouraging you to come out on Wednesday night, one hour, one day out of the week. Be here and support. This is your ministry. We're encouraging you parents to bring them out, get them out, uh, just to, to make sure that they're here on Wednesday nights and we are putting together and working on activities. We want to have worship services for the young people. You know, we usually do a kickoff event in the beginning of the year. We had to hold back this year because things were not quite yet in place. So now we have an event center down there. Amen. We're not, the world has a statement. They say we ain't turning turn down for what? We're not turning down for Jesus either. We're gonna turn up for Jesus, amen. So. We're looking to level up. We're looking to have those worship services and give them the worship experience where we can collaborate to get them the live worship music. They like that, too, and to be able to give them a facility to have to be able to do that. And we want you young people to bring all your young friends. Everybody bring your cousins. I don't care who it is. Bring them out here and let the Holy Spirit, let the Lord minister to them that they could be saved and become a part of this ministry as well and a part of the family of God. For my young adults, amen, as well. We meet here on Wednesday nights in the choir room at the end of this hallway. Uh, we are filling that room up. If we got to switch us and, and move the youth back to the, into the choir room and we take over the fellowship hall on Wednesday night, wherever we got to do to meet the demand, but we are growing in there. I'm encouraging you young adults, come and enjoy. We are in a time we call in the pivot. This is a pivotal stage in your life. You want to come in and find a ministry that's going to minister to you on relevant issues in the times that you're living in to help you navigate to this next phase of your life. We encourage you to be here on Wednesday night. We have service projects. We have fellowship outings to get together. We are excited. We, we are just ramping up. We're revving up and looking to move forward. So we just wanted to bring your attention to that. The young people, you will be here every Sunday, except for third Sunday. There's no nursery, no youth services. We worship as a family on third Sundays. But every other Sunday, our youth will be here, and K through 5 will be in the fellowship hall for their worship services. God bless you. Morning's offering time. As I, I look around the congregation, I'm so uh, happy because I see most people I know. You know, when you get to a church or you get to a situation, you see people you know, maybe not by name, but I've seen you, and I think you guys have seen all of us. Our choir is doing their thing. Is that Ariana, the little one right there? Boy, she was up there just singing up something. And that little guy there, I don't know him, but we're going to call him Rambo. Rambo and Ariana, boy, they were singing. Say, guys, the enthusiasm that they show is what the enthusiasm that we need to show, okay? We need to fill up this church, so I'm giving you guys some homework. Bring somebody next time, next Sunday, we're going to fill up the church. I want to see the overflow filled up because the pastors, they're going to have some stuff to talk to us about. So again, like I said, this is offering time. There are many ways that we offer. We got our musicians that we're so, so proud of and just doing a really good job with us. And, and just really the choir, I want to see the choir stand filled with this choir and men, men. I don't care if you can't sing, you can come with us because we can't sing. So y'all come up there. We're going to fill this thing up, okay? All right. Uh, this is offering time. We have a couple of different ways you can give your offering. It's right at the door. You have the envelope, and you, we got an app of some sort that we do. What is it called, Janine? She's shaking her head. So well, y'all know how to do it better than I do, because she, she does mine for me. So, All right, so this is our offering time. Lord, we thank you so much for this opportunity to always come together and, and be able to offer to you our talents, our meager funds and our whatever we have that we want to give but the most important thing god we put in our hearts and our minds that we really 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 need to come to the uh, decision that we are going to give we thank you so much for all that you do we appreciate you we love you and lord we praise your name pray in thy name amen, amen.
Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. We want the anointing to follow on us as we are getting ready to hear from heaven. Uh, there were a couple of video announcements that were to play. I didn't want to throw off the order of the service too much with having them play later on. Uh, just we'll be out after service in the front. Um, for the Covenant House, we are taking collections. It's a homeless shelter for young adults and their children. Please see us if you want to bring something. Next Sunday will be the deadline to do so. And we'll be outside out front um, in the parking lot as well with Sister Mia. We'll be finalizing the registrations for the Jews in Christ kickoff event for the young adult ladies as well. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's uh, approach the, the God's word and we, as we get ready to hear from heaven and from the man of God. The scripture reading is going to come from the Gospel of Mark chapter 5. And we'll be at verses 18 through 20. The Gospel of Mark chapter 5, verses 18 through 20. And it reads, And when he was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with them. Howbeit, Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord have done for thee, and have had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish it in Decapolis, how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. Here in the reading of God's word, and preach Pastor Jones. Can y'all hear me? Am I on? Amen. Um, people are being seated. Amen. 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 Some good seats up front. Good seats up front. Amen. Amen. Let's give them a hand. Amen. Let's give them a hand. Amen. 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 Remember now, Wednesday night, there will be no Bible study on Wednesday night. Amen. So those of you, amen, that normally comes out on Wednesday night, amen. After 4th of July, with all that you're going to eat on the previous day, we're giving you a chance to let that digest. Yes, and this is especially for me. In the book of St. Mark chapter 5, in our hearing, Pastor Wolf read, and he started at the 18th verse. And for five weeks now, we've been talking about a change of plans. Today, I, I seek to uh, finish up this series today. I want to thank God for Sister Lovely Beeman, who preached for us on Father's Day. Amen. I don't know if he's, he's here. And then Pastor Thomas preached for us on, on last Sunday. Amen. He is with his daughters, amen, for this, this week, amen. This whole sermon series has been centered around evangelism. In the light of what's going on in the country and around the world, I think this is a very important topic of evangelism. I believe the Lord is coming back. There's too much going on for him not to come back. There's too much going on for him not to come back. What is happening in the country, what's happening around the world 
It's not by luck and by chance. Everything is working as God has so planned it. Amen. But in reading that particular verse, Pastor Wolf read in our hearing, we started at verse 18, but you know the context. The context is who's talking, what seems to be happening, and what seems to be going on, where is the setting was. And we talked about how Jesus had came from Galilee, traveling to this region where there was a man that was in these tombs. And the Bible says that this man was in these tombs. He was isolated from his family, from his friends. And he was in a bad place in his life. And today I have a subtopic. My subtopic is today, taking the gospel to the home front. Taking the gospel to the home front. And the most difficult people, amen, to reach effectively with the gospel is people that are family members and people that know us very well. Come on, talk to me, somebody. I'm going to try to be as calm as I can, but I want you to know that I have some people and you have some people that need to know what we know about the Lord. They, they need to know why you get up on Sunday mornings and why are you so excited about the Lord, excited about the Word of God, and why would you come out and want to be among Christian people? And for those of you that's, that's online, we want to say to you too, we appreciate you being with us every Sunday. We appreciate you. We don't take your presence with us for granted. And for those who are, are just don't, can't get it yet, just don't plan to come back for a while. There are even churches and pastors who have determined that they won't do it like this any longer. I've talked to pastors who have determined that they're just going to be doing it online. But I think it's better that we be together every now and then. I just, because there's sometimes you just need a hug. Sometimes you need to be around. Uh, I, I'm just talking, just talking, I'm trying to mess with nobody. But sometimes you want to be around somebody. And this man was, was in this tomb. The Bible don't tell us how long he was in these tombs, but he was in these tombs isolated from his families and friends or whatever he got him there. I don't know what got him. I don't know what he got involved in. Sometimes we get involved in things that presses us or move us or force us into places we never intended. Come on, y'all. I don't think this man intended to be in the tombs. I don't think he intended to be there or by himself in these tombs cutting himself. I don't think he, and, but many of us get into things in life that put us in places we never intended. Amen. Now, Jesus said, Jesus said in the text, because I, I said earlier that it's hard to, to preach or talk effectively to people in your house because they see you as, when I go in Midway and I go to Sanford, people see me as Charles. They remember me when I was Bert's little boy. They remember me. And, and when I go home, Wanda don't call me Pastor Jones. That's my little sister. She called me Charles. Amen. Amen. She called me Charles. When I, when I go home, if I'm doing well, if I'm doing good, if I'm a good boy, Joyce would call me Bay. Oh, shut up. Amen. Now, if she called me Charles, or if she's really feeling good, she'll say, hey, Chuck, I know I'm in, oh, I'm in good state. But when she says, Charles, I, I always ask her now because I got so accustomed to being called babe. Come on, y'all, amen. <laughs> but when she says Charles, because she does that because she know me, she be around me, she, she see me in my ups and downs, and and Jesus said these words. I'm reading from the ESV in Mark chapter 6 and verse 4. Because I said that sometimes family members just see you as that. You don't get no higher than that with them. In Mark chapter 6 verse 4, ESV says, And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own hometown and among his relatives and in his own household. And the Bible says when Jesus, this particular verse, Jesus had gone back to Nazareth. He has been preaching in a place called Capernaum. 
The man was doing outstanding miracles. He was doing miracles such as has never seen before. Nobody had talked like this man. And yet he was in all these miracles in Capernaum in a city far away from his hometown in Nazareth. They remember him as being just a carpenter's son. They remember walking around with Joseph and fixing things and fixing chairs and, and working on people's homes. And that's as far as they got to know him. Those are his home folks. But now they're getting word that this same boy that was Joseph's son and Mary's son is now doing miracles. And also he's claiming to be the promised Messiah of Israel. This is very disturbing. And his hometown folks want to see, is this really true about the boy we remember walking the dusty streets of Nazareth? So he go back home. He get back home and everybody's eyes must have been locked to him so they can see a miracle by this person that used to fix their furniture, that used to fix some of their plumbing in the house. I don't know what he did, but all I know, he was, they knew he was a good reader. They knew he was a popular. They knew that he carried himself with a lot of dignity. They knew that it was something about him, but they never thought that he would become the Messiah or even claim to be the Messiah because they thought he was coming from some royal family somewhere. Little did they know that the very Messiah of Israel had grown up on the dust district in his spy city of Nazareth. His mother never said a word. Joseph never gave mention of it. And yet this young man was walking among them and he was doing some, some, some awesome things in Capernaum and they heard about this, waiting for him to get home. Now he shows up in his hometown. You could have bet that when he picked the Bible up, he got there. Normally his custom was he would go into, and it was Jewish custom that you'll find a young boy to always be a reader sometimes in the synagogue as a means of training them. Jesus must have, Sister Mobley, amen, must have gone to what they call, or we call, Sunday school. He was active in, in that. So when he read, it was no big thing. But he got a passage of scripture and he began to read about this particular verse of scripture. And he says this scripture were referring to him. Now they get offended by him saying, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. He was all but saying that the scripture he read was a prophetic word that saying that this word has something to do with you. We remember your daddy. Can I talk to somebody here? Now Jesus there, and the Bible says in this text, and Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and among his relatives and in his own household. And he could not do, here it is, verse 5, he could not do mighty works there except to lay hands on a very few sick people and heal them. And he marveled because of the unbelief. Notice he could not do the miracles because of unbelief. And the reason why God can't do great things in some of our lives is not because he don't want to. It's because your faith is the key by which he can do them. So not that God don't want to, he can't. Not because he don't have the ability to it, because your faith, the Bible says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. You got to believe something that you can't see. You got to believe something you can't hear. You got to believe something you can't touch. Faith is, somebody said, the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not. See, God loves somebody who can believe him when all the circumstances around you speak otherwise. Because in that way, you can't get the credit and I can't get the credit for what God is doing. Preach, Pastor. Amen, somebody. We are going to see Jesus tell this man after he gets out the boat, Pastor Wolf, you read to, after he gets out the boat, the very people he tell him to go to, when this man has been isolated, this man has been ill-treated, has been put chains, has been put on his arms by those of whom that he grew up around. They were afraid of him. They were, they were talking about him, may have been putting their family down. And now when he says to Jesus, let me go with you after Jesus delivered him, Jesus said, go home. I don't want to go there because I remember my uncle was the one that told them that I was crazy. He says, go home to your own people, among the people that you grew up with. You know, 
You know, you know, you know, sometimes when I go to Midway, come on, somebody. Come on, come on, somebody. Come on. When I go to Midway, sometimes I purposely ride the streets of Midway. And sometimes I look at what Midway has become. There used to be a time in Midway on Sunday mornings, it was sacred. Come on, somebody. Even somebody. When people went to church, and if you didn't go to church, you didn't talk loud in the neighborhood. You didn't go fishing on Sunday mornings. If you wasn't saved, there was something sacred about it. But when I go to Midway now, we got a generation of people that don't know the Lord. We're growing up in a nation in a place where the next generation don't even know anything about God and they don't care. Priest Jones, even somebody. I'm, trying to, I'm just trying to stick to what I'm talking about, a change of plans. Jesus get there with this man. He's, the Bible says a prophet is not without honor except in his own hometown, among his own relatives, and in his own household. But we are going to see this is the place Jesus tells this man to go back and talk to your people. When I talk to my little brother Ronner and Larry, some of my cousins... They all see me as Charles. Some of y'all see me as Pastor Jones. But with them, I'm just Charles. Come on, somebody. They don't give me no title when they call me. They don't respect me like some of y'all respect me. They see me as Charles. Come on, y'all. And what I do, too, so I won't get too high on myself. I go to Midway and I eat in the yard like I used to eat. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Because sometimes when we get to a certain place in life, we forget where we came from. Can I talk to somebody? Sometimes when God gives us certain status in life, when you can drive better, live better, eat better, you forget where you came from. You forget about the bologna sandwich. You forget about the collard greens with no meat. You forget about that type of thing. But after nine, then I go back and I get me a bologna sandwich with cheese. Come on, tell somebody, just to remind myself of what it used to be, not because I wanted to, because we had to. Every now and then, I love to eat catfish stew, amen, somebody, with a catfish head in the stew to remind me of where I used to come from. Can I talk to somebody? But sometimes we get beyond ourselves and think that we start smelling ourselves just because of what we drive and the way we stay at now. I'm, I'm, I'm going on. The radar of life can be distorted when we're looking through it, even somebody, through lens of flesh. Because sometimes we never saw in the radar of our life where we would end up today. No one can never tell me when I was coming up that God would have a plan for me to be a preacher. You could have never told me that, man, I was born, praise God, illegitimately, raised by a single mom. Who would ever thought, praise God, that I would be a preacher and God would call me to this sacred place? My mother, even though I sucked her breast and on her lap, she never knew that in her womb, God had ordained a preacher. So I'm saying to you, I don't care what people say about you. I don't care what they think about you. They don't know your story until God let them read a verse or two. Don't you ever, don't you ever, don't you ever doubt yourself. You don't know what God has for you. You just got to walk by faith and not by sight. I don't care what they said about you. I don't care what family you came from. You got to know that you know that you know you know that God can do exceedingly abundant above all you could ever ask or think of. I just want to talk to two people, not a whole lot of y'all. Because some of y'all think y'all been this way all the time. Praise God, even somebody. But James said there's some people that always thinking about, you know, I'm going to do this tomorrow and do this today. But let me tell you something. You don't know what tomorrow going to bring. 
You better, you go, you better, you better count your blessing day. You may make plans to do something, but God said, listen, I'll change your plans. There are people right now that may be making plans to do something right now, but God said, when you get all your plans together, I got something for you because I could cause your plans to change. Preach, Pastor Jones. Amen, somebody. I'm, I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about it now. How most of us lived lives that seldom include. Sometimes we make decisions in our life that never included God. I'm the only one in this place has ever did something in my life. Even the radar of life said I wouldn't be here. I just, I, God, I just didn't have no time to talk to no God. I, I wouldn't around people that talk about God all the time. And I made decisions. I made decisions that did not include God because I didn't think he cared. In fact, I didn't know whether or not he was real or not. All I know what my grandma and them talked about. Come on, somebody. So I made many of my plans and didn't include him because I didn't know just how real he was. Preach, Pastor Jones. But most of us have never included him. And some of the decisions that we made still, still to this day, have lingering thoughts of regrets because we never sought God. Lingering thoughts of regrets because you said, if I would have known what I know now, if I would have knew some things, some decisions that I made back then, the lingering thoughts of regrets have hit me because if I knew what I know now, there were some things I'd have prayed about relationships. I'd have prayed about career choices. Come on, somebody. I'd have prayed about a whole lot of stuff if I had known what I know now. This is why we must preach with passion before people because people sit around and they don't know that God says, listen, if you acknowledge, come on, somebody. I just wish somebody. Here in, in, in Proverbs chapter 3 and verse Five says these words. Oh, oh, y'all, I just wish I had known what I know now. Praise God. The word says in Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5, it says, trust in the Lord with some of your heart. Trust the word. The Hebrew meaning for that word trust means to lie extended on the ground. It's a word in which we, when we talk to God, we're in a posture of worship. That word trust is a word that's, that means to lie extended prostrate in the Lord with some of our heart. Lean not. That word means to rely or depend on. Come on, somebody. Depend. That own understanding. I don't care how many degrees you got. I don't care how smart you think you are. There's some things in life you just don't know. You can cross all your T's and dot all your I's. There's some things in life you don't have a handle on. Come on, somebody. I don't know about you, but there have been times when I thought I had it together. It was going to work out like this way, and it worked out just the opposite. Because God has said, listen, I'll show you. If you don't want to talk to me and I'm the one that's orchestrating events of life, if you don't want to talk to me, come on somebody, I'll talk to your circumstances. And I'll make them not operate the way you want to operate. I'll talk to your bank account. I'll talk to your, come on somebody, I'll talk to your spiritual, I'll talk to them if I can't talk to you. And this way, you say, Pastor Jones, but I got to marry this dude. He's six foot three, 220 pounds. He tall, dark. Handsome. <laughs> Got a job. Got to get her. She's fine. She's smart. She got a degree. Her family got pedigree. Got to marry this girl. Miss Mona married Jason. I'm married marry Abby. <laughs> Trust in the Lord. He says, in all of thy ways, acknowledge the word, acknowledge the word means to announce to or to say, think about it. Come on, somebody. In all thy ways, announce it to God or tell him, God, think about what I'm talking to you. But anybody, anybody, my kids, somebody comes and say, Daddy, well, before you do it, Daddy, think about it. Because Ken is good with that. Well, Daddy, th before you do this, Daddy, think about it. 
But the idea of the respect to come and announce what she want to do. Come on, somebody. And ask me to bed before you say no. Think about it. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. You need to ask God sometimes. God, before you turn me down, think about it. And sometimes after God think about it, he says, that man ain't right for you. Come on, somebody. That girl ain't right for you. That job is not right for you. Let me tell you something. We got to ask God, God, wherever you decide, then God, I know it's right. How many of you done got a relationship and praise God, your mama and your daddy told you not to get there, but he was too fine and she was too fine. You got it in the way, praise God. You could have ate him at that time and now you wish you had. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. And let us be honest. Our faith in God today would have been, would prevent us, the faith we got today would have prevented us from getting involved with things and people that we mess with right now. If, the, if I had our faith in God, there would be some people I would not have even talk to them. The faith I have in God today, there's some things I got involved with, Mike, praise God, I would not have got involved in it. Not with the faith I have today in God. Preach, Pastor Jones. Amen, somebody. I thank God. I thank God when I wasn't seeking him, God was seeking me. Come on, somebody. God, God knew me. God knew. God knew that it was not good in me, but God said, I'm going to put something good in it. And that's why, praise God, when I come to church, I ain't playing no games. And I ain't got time for no church stuff. Because this thing is real. I know what God has done in my life. When I come to this campus, I laugh, I talk, but praise God, I ain't playing no games. Why? Because God saved me out of a terrible place in my life. And God has honored me to praise God. He's honored me. Praise God. And you, if you honor God, God honor. Let me tell you something. If you take care of your God's house, he'll take care of yours. Are y'all hearing me? So whatever you do from this point on, you make sure, I don't care what it is, acknowledge God. Say, God, I'm going to worship. God, should I do this or not? Should I go here? Should I and get myself in Look, you, when you do that, God will get in your way and God says, listen, if that joker ain't right, mama, I don't want to hear this. God will make that joker act crazy. You say, what? Huh? God will make him act crazy and make you leave him alone. Have you ever had somebody walked off from y'all? And you were, you, I mean, you had it all in, you was all in, and you come to find it, you thought they was all in, they weren't all in. I told y'all one time, praise God, I was dating this girl in high school, praise God, and she was all in. Come on, somebody. And she thought I was all in. And every time I'd be with her, I'd be looking at other girls. So she called my mama one day, she said, Bert, every time me, I'm with Charles, he's always looking at other girls. My mama said, I'm going to tell you something. The next time he look at another girl when you with him, I want you to blind him. So I went on doing what I always did. Praise God. I was looking. Hey, it's God. We're riding in Lover's Lane in some of the high school in Lover's Lane. And praise God, I seen a pretty girl walk by. And all of a sudden, I start seeing stars. <laughs> and guess what, y'all? I know that wasn't my wife. I quit that girl. I ain't married till today. Praise God. See, sometimes God will put people that make them do something and make you say, no, that ain't the one for you, brother. So when that girl slapped me like that, I know I don't want to wake up to slap every day. I'm just saying. Notice the people that should have celebrate this man's deliverance is not afraid of a source of it. Come on, somebody. Jesus has delivered this man from this, this awesome place he was in. These demons was driving him crazy. And you would have thought the people in the neighborhood would be glad that now he's been delivered. They were afraid of him. Don't you fool yourself. Some people that ought to celebrate you or hate you. It's some people that God used you to help them be where they are today. People that rode on your coattail. God has got them to where they are right now when they ought to celebrate you or start despising you. Preach, Jones. Notice in Mark chapter 5, verse 14, and they that fed the swines and, 
and told it to the city and in the country. And they went out to see what was done. Verse 15 says, and they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with devils and had legions. They knew about his circumstance. They knew where he came from. It says they came. Notice that the one that fed the, front, fed the swines, look at the evangelistic move. They, they would have told somebody about it. They went and told it to the city and the country, and they went out to see what was done. Then verse 15, and they come to see Jesus. That was a good thing. They came to see Jesus, wait a minute, somebody, and see him that was possessed with the devil. That people come to church. They ain't come to church for the same reason. Everybody come in church ain't coming in for the same reason. They look like they're coming to see Jesus for what they need from him, but they're coming in here so they can just see what y'all, how y'all acting. They came to Jesus and they come to see the man that possessed. Because sometimes people see, use you as a circus. Look at Tara, they're dancing all around him. And some people know, I remember when Tara did this. I remember, oh my God, my God, look, oh shoot. I remember she growing up, praise God. And you become a spectacle for people. Come on, some money. You went back to your hometown, the people that you now, and you praising God. Give me God praise. I remember you dance on dance floor just like the now you come up getting holy now. They came to see not only Jesus, but they came also to see the man. Come on, somebody. But then when they came to see what was happening, that possessed with the devil had and had the legions, he was doing three things. He was sitting, he had some clothes on, which you note he didn't have any on, and was in his right mind, which means that he was in the wrong mind before. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on, y'all. <laughs> come on. He was in his right mind. And the Holy Ghost was very strategic in putting that word right mind, Larry John, because he was in his wrong mind. And that some of us, come on, let's admit it. Some of us have some crazy thoughts. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on. Some of y'all went to bed last night. Y'all some stupid. I mean, in fact, some of y'all sitting in church right now got some crazy ones right now. <laughs> come on. But the man was in his right mind, Mia. He was in his right mind now, which means he was thinking outside of the norm. This man was doing things and acting in ways that was outside of norm. Amen, somebody. But Jesus has changed all that. They come out and see him. Say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Somebody, they, they, they get out there and they came to Jesus, looking at Jesus and looking at this man and saying, wait a minute. He's sitting because, oh, the reason the, the Holy Ghost put sitting up there because sitting speaks of something. Come on, somebody. Sitting, come on. Sitting denotes a place of rest. This man was never, he was cutting himself. So sitting, now notice this man was always running around cutting himself. But the Bible says when they came there, they found the man sitting. A place of rest. Come on, somebody. A place of rest. And no one was just sitting, but the Bible says he had some clothes on that denotes a place of security. He had no security. But now he's sitting in a place of rest. He got clothes on. Now that took a place of security, he didn't have all of that because he didn't know for one day to make what was going on. These demons were driving him crazy. There's another thing, too. He was in his right mind, denotes a place of peace. Come on, somebody. Anybody had your mind going all over the place? I'm going to talk to two people that are going to, let's, let's be serious. There are times when we're sleeping at night, your mind be all over the place. You can't sleep. Come on, somebody. Amen, somebody. You're thinking about everything that what you're, you can't sleep, you can't rest. Your mind is all over the place. I've had to get up some nights and rebuke my thoughts. Come on, somebody. I had to get up some nights and say, I don't want to think about that right now. Because not only your own mind, but Satan has access to our thoughts. He'll put thoughts in your mind, have you consecrating on them. You can't even rest because he keeps saying, remember this, you got to do this. They mad at you, they're mad at you. What you going to do? In this house today, there's some people in this house right now has been experiencing that right now. You got no peace. You got no rest. But I'm telling you, my man, his name is Jesus. <laughs> that can give you a place where you can rest a little bit. 
Come on, somebody. Well, you can get some peace a little bit. Come on, somebody. And you can find security in him. It's in Jesus Christ. I make no apologies about Jesus. Come on, somebody. There have been nights when I'm not worried about this church. I'm worried about my family. I'm worried about everything. Sometimes I look over. Sometimes it disturbs me further. I look at my wife. She sleeps all night. And sometimes I'm up five and six times a night. Sometimes worried about things in this church. Come on, somebody. Worried about people going through stuff. Come on, somebody. Worried about my children. Worried about my grandkids. Even somebody. I have, to, I, have to put, I, have to, I have to put the word of God in my ear. Come on, somebody. Just to wash away and to fight off, amen, somebody, the thoughts of my mind. Somebody say, just go to beg and forget all about it. That's easy for you to say. But when you got responsibility on you, you got people counting on you. Come on, somebody. You have to be in a place where you need God in your life to help you get through the next day. When you got all the troubles of the world, then on top of that, you got people, praise God, don't even care about what you've gone through. Don't even care about what you have to deal with. Don't even care about none of this. Don't even pray for you. This man was going through all of this, and there were people that should have celebrated him and prayed for him. But you know what? They can't, and ask Jesus, praise up. No, these crazy people ask Jesus. Leave him. The same people that was afraid of him. That Jesus not only delivered him, but delivered them from him. And the demons that was in the region, Jesus sent them from the region. And the same people that should have celebrated him asked Jesus, we're we're afraid, I want you to leave him. Come on, y'all. Sometimes, and when you ask Jesus to leave, he won't stay. You'd have thought he'd have forced himself in here. When somebody tell me I'm done with you, Pastor Jones, I'm, come on, somebody. You ain't got to keep worrying about me bothering you either. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I ain't run up on you. Uh-uh. If you tell me that, praise God, you done with me, praise God, I'm done with you too. Come on, somebody. And I'll wait for you because God will make a time where you think you don't need me now. God will bring where you'll need me after a while. Come on, somebody. God has a way. God has a way of making you think you don't need nobody now. God will make that person the only person you can talk to, the only person you can deal with, the only person that will pray for you. God said, you go ahead and talk right now, but I'll fix it. Well, you can't go to your grandmother, you can't go to your granddaddy, you got to go back to the person you said you won't ever need. So let me tell you, those of you that feel somebody don't care about you, that's against you, don't worry about it. God got your back. He got your back. God going to cover you. I'll say, you better come and give me some music. Um. But while he's doing that, can I say something to you? We must see people as a valuable asset, sister. Montgomery, investing in people. Come on, somebody. We got to start investing in people. Because some of you are going to have a whole bunch of money going to go, and you're going to die and leave all your little old money in the bank. You invest in in everything else but what God. People are so valuable. I sell. They were so valuable that the God of heaven, they were so valuable that God himself said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go now. But I can see the angels and but God, you you can't do that. I'm going to go now. I'm going to clothe myself in what they're clothed with. Find me a woman to give me some flesh. And God the Father said, you want to do that? Yes, I want to do that. He said, well, I'll provide the blood. Because the blood and the baby come from the daddy. I don't care what you say. Come on, somebody. I don't, babies don't come from men. Babies don't come from ladies. Baby come from men. And God said, you just get me a woman. And I'll be the daddy. Come on, somebody. And God overshadowed a little peasant girl, a 
country girl. Why didn't he get one of those princes in a, in a castle? He'd go and find a despised girl about 12 years old. Overshadowed this girl of all the peasants. He'd get this girl. See, God choose the foolish things in the world to find the things which are mighty. God overshadowed this woman. This, this girl, she may not look like much, but she loved God. Come on, somebody. She, she loved God. This girl, was, this girl was in God's word. And God came down to become a person like you and me. It behooved him to be made like unto his brothers. And he came down and he took on this place. And said, God said, when you go down there, they're going to talk about you. And son, I want you to know, I'm not going to pull no punches because everything a person got to suffer, you got to do that. If you want to be that redeemer, then you got to feel everything they've ever felt. You got to get up, and, but, but yours is going to be worse because you never sinned. So therefore, your hurt is going to be magnified. So every lie told on you, it's going to be so much worse because with us, when we lie on somebody and we get lied on, it shouldn't hurt us that bad because we did it too. But when you haven't done anything, come on somebody. He said, what they're going to do, they're going to talk about you, they're going to spit on you. They're going to accuse you. They're going to they're they're get up, they're going to they're gonna get up the, the things on you, call you all kinds of names. They're going to be getting all this stuff on you. He said, I still go. He says, prepare me a body. And I'll go down. He said, but son, you're going to die. And when you die, I cannot. I'm, son, I'm, I don't, I'm going to have to let you go through everything. You'll feel every, every, they're going to nail you. Do you not know this era of the Romans? The worst type of execution. You're going to die like that. But for the joy that was set before. He said, God, when I'm looking around, if, I, if you let me go through that, and God, if, if they can just believe in me, Lord, you say they can be saved. He said, yeah, they can be saved. He says, you're going to go through it. For you and for me, God has never allowed anybody to go to hell. We go there because we choose to. All the provision was made. Every sin you've ever committed, every sin you'll ever commit has already been taken care of. He took every sin that you will do and everything I've ever done, and he put it on himself. He that knew no sin was made sin, that we might become the righteous of God in him. For in him we live, we move, and we have our being. Come on, somebody. Everything that we could ever dream to be, he's in it. That's why the Bible says we are complete in him. We stand holy in him. And that's why we can stand before God one day, absolutely sin-free, not because of our, but because of the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm good. They put him on that cross. And they buried him in somebody's borrowed tomb. He said, you got to stay there three days, though. Yes, because Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all of them is in the grave. He said, I'm going to go down and preach to those that sound the grave. They was, they was looking for the becoming Messiah. Come on, somebody. They was looking for him to come. He never showed up. But he says, when he got down the grave, he stepped down and says, here I am. Everything you believed about the Messiah, here I am. And the Bible said he led captivity captive. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, everybody came out the grave. And they walked Jerusalem. Come on, somebody. Walk in Jerusalem. Now, everybody, now we look back at what he's done. They were looking forward to what he's going to do. And now, if you die, you won't die because you didn't know. I have preached to you the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you die, you won't die because you didn't hear. You will die because you chose to. But I want you to know this morning that you can be saved. Every sin you've ever committed is already forgiven. Everybody's standing on your feet. Everybody's standing on your feet. And the Bible said God raised him from the dead. One of my counselors are coming. One of my counselors are coming. If there's somebody here, somebody that's online, write us and let us know. So, Pastor Jones, I heard you. But, Pastor, you don't know. I'm, I've been drinking. I've been cussing. I don't like church. I talked about you preachers. I talked about, and Pastor, I did everything I can. I know, I know you have. But that's okay. You didn't catch Jesus by surprise. I want you to know as I look at you from this screen, God loves you. 
He loves you. I don't care how much drink, I don't care how much drug. He can break your drug addiction. He can break your alcohol addiction. He can break your sexual addiction. He can break all of it. You just put your trust. And write us and let us know. Write us and let us know. And somebody pray with you. Now, if there's somebody, I want all heads bow and all eyes closed. And also pray this prayer together. Whether you're saved or unsaved, pray this prayer. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you so much for caring when I didn't. I thank you that, Lord, I understand this is not just some religious gathering. This is the time we get to hear the good news. That man that we preached about, he went and he published it to all of the people that rejected him. And God, now, I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior and my Lord. Forgive me for every sin I've ever done. Whether I've thought about it or whether I committed it, I'm sorry. And I accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior and my Lord. And by faith, I believe I'm saved. I'm saved. And I rejoice in it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time in your life, when we was coming to this Baptist, they tell us, come shake a preacher's hand, but they never told us what to do to be saved. You don't have to change. You don't have to stop smoking, stop drinking. It's just doing what we just did. Confess Jesus Christ, and you're saved right now, I guarantee. If you die this next moment, you're going to heaven if you prayed that prayer. If you're here today, have prayed that prayer for the first time. Everybody Jesus called, he called in public. Are you here today? Are you here today? Come out and say, I just prayed this prayer for the first time and I meant it. Are you here today? I'm going to make this assumption then that everybody in here has already prayed that prayer and you're saved. And I rejoice in knowing that if the rapture happened tomorrow or today, I'm going to see all of you in heaven. Is that right? Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. All right, y'all, we're going to have communion. Amen. People have to remind me because, you know, I get wrapped up and forget and get stuff. We do this on the first Sunday of every month. He says, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth his death and suffering until he come again. This bread represents Jesus' body that was broken for you. Let's eat all of it. This wine that represents the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that was shed for the remissions of sins. Let's drink all of it. God bless you. Enjoy your fourth. Rick, I see you. Good to see you, bro.